Hello, for this exercise we're going to look at how to bring in geometry from an external program and add parameters to it within MatterMachine. So to do so we're going to export these components as OBJ files. Uh, you can see we've got a very simple kind of coffee table type thing, quite a large coffee table really. Um, but we're not too worried about that because we're going to add parameters to it and we're going to be able to resize things. So we're going to go, go across and export them out as OBJ files. And now we're going to go across into Matter Machine. And to import files into Matter Machine, you can import things in uh, manually with import nodes. Or, alternatively, uh, you can just open up your browser and your Windows or Mac browser and drag geometry in into the graph window of Matter Machine. So if you give it a minute or two to bring in the geometry, depending on how fast your connection is, it'll load up and if we click on that leg and press F down in the preview window, zoom out a bit, you can see it's brought in the leg, it's brought it in with soft edges um, so we can fix it later on or now by unwelding those vertices you unweld and we'll have to do that for all geometry that we bring in so bring in the support and the tabletop and again just unwelding for the support and, and just as a reminder, I'm creating these nodes by hitting enter in the graph window and typing in what I want to create, or typing in the node that I wish to make. Um, and I'm navigating around the preview window by holding alt and left click to rotate and alt and middle mouse to pan about. Cool. So we should have our three geometries that we need. Um, to make our life a little bit easier, we're going to move this tabletop to be at the world origin. So we want the origin to be at the center of the table. It can be done pretty easily by creating or finding the geometry centroid of the tabletop. Geometry centroid. And so the geometry centroid provides the centroid of the table in three axes, the center of the x, y, and z axes. So if you know a little bit of vector math, you can reverse a position relative to the origin axes by just multiplying that vector by minus one. You'll see that there were two multipliers. So when I Typed in one multiplier is for single number components or lists, and one is a multiply vector. So multiply vector by default operates with three numbers. Um, and so you'll select your multiply vector, and you could either type in minus one in all three of these vectors, or minus one of the factor, or you could just hit reverse. And what's that, what that gives us is the direction that the geometry needs to go for the geometry centroid to become zero. Now we'll create a transform or move node. Uh, you have two options here. You can create a transform node, but we'll only create a move node because we don't need rotation components. And we'll take our multiply vector and pipe it into the move nodes translation. So you'll see that's just automatically gone in there. And now we need the need to give this move node the geometry that it's moving. So we'll just take across the tabletop. It's a little bit hard to tell what it's done at this point when you only can see the single node that's active. So if you shift select unweld, that gives the tabletop's previous position. You can see it's moved quite nicely to the uh, world origin. So we need to find a way to position these legs, so if we shift select the leg at the correct spot, um, 
and the legs themselves will actually have to be moved to the world origin axes. Uh, well, they don't have to be. To do that, we're going to come to the graph again and just drag over our nodes. Control C, Control V, copies those nodes, and we can just drag them up. Um, you can see it's still connected to the previous node. And we're just going to pipe that leg into the correct connection of these new pasted nodes. Delete the unnecessary node lingering from before. And now the leg itself has come to the world origin axis. Uh, unfortunately, we don't want to be moving the leg down. We want the leg to stay at the on the origin plane. Um, so we're actually going to break this vector up into its components and um, ensure that the Y component remains the same. So to do that, uh, you could come down into the create nodes and go math vector convert vector to XYZ and XYZ to vector. We know that's what we're after, so we're just going to type that in here. XYZ to vector and vector to XYZ. And we're going to turn this geometry centroid into vector to XYZ. And this breaks it into its X, Y, and Z components. And we want to prevert, well, preserve the Y component of this uh, geometry. All that we're going to do is pipe in the X and the Z component. And this will leave the Y uh, the same as what it was before. And we'll multiply that vector. So now if I shift select the two aspects of it, you'll see that there's been a small movement. But if I shift select the table, one of those legs, this leg is at the world origin. So we need to create uh, some vector positions or some positions for these legs at the correct spot on a table. Um, we know that the leg is positioned at the edge of the table. If we go back to the model and look at it, the leg is butted up right against the very edge. Um, the center of the leg is at the center. That means that we have to move the leg, the the uh, half the length of the table, minus half the size of the leg. Um, I hope that hope that makes a little bit of sense. So to do that, how could we go about that? There's there's several ways that we could go about it. We could find out the size of the table. We'll do that, actually. So we'll go geometry size. And this tells us, so if we come and click on the geometry size, come into the parameter window and click on the output, it'll open up the outputs of the geometry size. Um, you can view the size of the geometry, so we can see it's uh, 1,153 millimeters along X, 35 millimeters along Y, and 1,853 millimeters along Z. That's a very large table, very large coffee table. How can we go about this? We want to know the geometry size of the leg as well. So we'll get the geometry size of the leg. We'll have a look at these outputs. We really want to we want to divide divide that by two possibly. Actually, the better way to do it, what we can do is we're just going to create points where the legs are going to go. And to do that, we can use various different methods. We could create a plane at the center of the table and scale that plane to be the same size as the table. Or we could create a point grid with four points and that's probably what we'll do. We'll pop back into Matter Machine and we'll create a point grid. And the size of our point grid will be the size of our tabletop. 
So the size of our tabletop minus the size of one leg. And the reason we use one leg is because we have two legs in the full length of the table. Um, and we know that each leg is half the size of the leg off the end of the table. If we're doing it for two, we're just removing the size of one leg. Uh, come back into Matter Machine and we will subtract. We'll need two subtracts. The size X, so we're opening up the geometry output of these nodes by clicking on the right hand side of them. So we're going to subtract the size X of the tabletop from the size X of the Oh, we're going to subtract the size x of the leg from the size x of the tabletop and the size z of the leg from the size z of the tabletop and that will give us the size of our point grid that we want to create just going to take that into resolution Ooh. so we actually need a vector for our spacing. If we come back to our point grid we should probably start working with this now. We know that we only want four points and so we only want two points along X so that is two points, one point for each leg so two and we want a resolution of one along Y and two along Z and we're gonna, we need to make our spacing, and that's a vector. You can see it has three values. So we're going to go x, y, z to vector, and we'll pipe our x result for the size of the table minus the size of a leg into the x of the x, y, z to vector, and our z result for the same thing. And we'll pipe this into our spacing. So now we should have spacing. It's a bit hard to see. So to make that a little bit clearer for now, we're going to create some poly spheres and oh, we'll take the points from the point grid into the poly spheres and we'll make our poly spheres quite large. Maybe maybe that's a little bit too large. And for what we're doing now, we can shift select our polyspheres and our table. So you can see the point grid's actually been created off center. Um, so we need to move this point grid back to the center of the world as well. Um, we can copy this logic here and apply it to the point grid. we check, take our points from our new moved point grid into the polyspheres and we'll just shift select that polysphere and our tabletop just um, it pays to remember that you can rename nodes by just double clicking on them uh, so tabletop at origin So now we can click on these two nodes and view what's going on. And we can see that these spheres, a little bit hard to see, are at the correct spot relative to the tabletop. These are essentially giving us position for the legs. Um, so what we need to do is create a node that can copy the legs at these points. We now need to create a node that will copy uh, these legs at these points for the tabletop. We need to create uh, we need to create legs at these circle points for the tabletop. To do so, we're going to create a copy using vectors node. Oops. I had a 
geometry is selected so it's automatically connected to the copy using vectors. Just going to disconnect that. It's not the uh, object I wish to be copying. So copy using vectors has a geometry input. We're going to take the geometry from the moved table legs, the table legs at the origin or world origin of um, x and z. And we're going to provide it with the points, the moved points. So we don't want to provide it with the, the whole geometry of the moved points. We just want to provide it with the points, positions. So we click on that. We can see it's beginning to do what we want it to do. And we know that the normal of our legs should be, uh, the up vector should be along y. But you can't have the same up vector as you have a normal. So if we change that normal to 1, and now we can see it's upside down. So we can flip that up vector by typing minus 1. It can be a bit hard to get your head around. Um, these vector things, if you just type in some numbers at this point, uh, you will work it out. It's, it's, yeah, it's not too bad. So if we shift, le shift select the legs and the tabletop, we can now see that the legs are positioned roughly where they need to be. Uh, the next step will be moving the tabletop to the top of the legs do so. We're going to get the geometry size of the legs, of all the legs. It, we could be using the geometry size from here actually, but to keep it kind of modular we're just going to calculate it again. And if we open up the outputs we know the size of the leg is 423 along y, and we know that the table is positioned at the world uh, XYZ 0 for the time being. So we're going to move the table uh, using a vector that will construct from the size of the table legs. So we'll construct this vector, which means we'll use an XYZ to vector. And we want to move the table top. Uh, the size of the legs plus half of the size of the tabletop because we know the tabletop is actually sitting kind of intersecting with the origin. Um, it's a little bit hard to display that but if I created a poly sphere now just made it quite large and I selected that as well as tabletop you can see that the polysphere was created at world origin and it's intersecting both sides of the table. So the table is actually intersecting what would be the floor. Um, we'll take the geometry size of the tabletop, which we actually already have here, and add it. Well, we want half of it as well. We want half the geometry size of the tabletop, size y, value, we're going to divide it by 2, pipe that into the add, and we'll add that to the size y of the legs, so if we select this we know it's the legs, so the size y of these legs, and pipe that into the y of the xyz to vector and pipe that into the move. So the move now has its translation for what it needs to move the tabletop but it doesn't have the geometry. So we'll come back to the tabletop, pipe that across to the move and now we're beginning to get somewhere. If we select that as well as the legs, we now have our table with legs. Um, so that we can always see this when nothing's selected, we're going to drag the out, which is the node that gets selected by default when nothing is selected in the graph, and we're going to pipe in our tabletop as well as our legs. And this just means that we have a visualization. 
for what we're doing while we're working. We've kind of reconstructed our table, or at least partially reconstructed it, but we haven't actually given it any parameters. Uh, we haven't given a way to resize the table. Um, and to do that, we will return to the original geometry parts. Uh, so we've given it a logic, a relationship between the parts. They all know how they interact with each other and where they are relative to each other. But we still need to give them uh, inputs. So we'll create scales. And we can scale the geometry at various different points of this logic. And uh, it'll make more sense to do it at certain points than others. Although, in a way, we can just scale it right at the very start because they have relationships to each other rather than uh, kind of the abstract parametric sizes. Um, so what we could do is we could just take the original tabletop that we've imported in, scale it by an abstract amount. You can see that this is the unwelded geometry down in the preview window. Um, we could be scaling by an abstract amount uh, to, oops, probably don't want to scale it along y, uh, 2 along x, and 5 along z. We could pipe that into the unwelled vertices. And our table should have reconstructed. And you can see it did just that. Uh, to kind of a ridiculous but somewhat fantastic degree. So we'll just return these scales back down to, to normal. Now the interesting thing about importing geometry in uh, is it, you have to almost deconstruct it back down to a, um, a working unit. We are going to take the tabletop and scale it down so that its dimensions are 1 in all three axes. Um, this will make scaling later on uh, an easy way to drive the size of the table. Uh, you'll see what I mean very, very soon. Um, so we'll take the geometry size of the tabletop. And what we need to be able to do is multiply the vector of the tabletop by we need to be able to multiply the vector of the tabletop by an amount that will bring the tabletop down to zero. So um, we can do that by taking the geometry size and piping that into the second value of a divide and 1 divided by the original value gives us a number that if we multiply by the original value gives 1. Um, it's a little bit hard to understand for now but you'll probably see the results of it quite quickly. Uh, I just copied that node so the wrong connection was in there. I need to Make sure that it's the Z value coming in and add 1 to that divide. Make sure that all the divides have 1 as their um, upper value. And now I'll make a XYZ to vector, XYZ to vector, and pipe in the correct values per axis and oh, we already have a multiply vector available to us so we can multiply this vector by the geometry size vector um, which is just the original vector so we can create another XYZ to vector X Y, Z, 
we will multiply that by. And so if we create a scale node, just we'll duplicate up on it for a little bit, take our tabletop into it, and pipe this multiplier into the scale. Ah, I've been a bit silly. I actually didn't need this multiply vector at all. All I needed to do was divide the result uh, by one divided by the original size and take this vector into the scale. And now our object should be one in size. So we have a tabletop that is one millimeter by one millimeter by one millimeter. Um, not uh, not super ideal. I mean, it could just be a cube at this point. But what we can do is now we can go to create another x y z to vector. We can create a float. Three, probably three floats is what you're after. Disconnect. And these are going to be your thickness of the table, uh, actually width, thickness, and length. And so we're going to give the width of the table a value of something like 100. We'll give it a max value of 200. Actually, we probably want higher values than that. So we'll give our table a width of something like 450 although that won't work until I raise the max. So we need to raise the max first. Come back to the value 450, min of say 400. And set the default. Uh, and the default needs to be within the range of the min and max. So make 450 the default. And pipe that into the X. Our thickness, we have the original value was 35. We can check that by looking at the geometry size. So we can create a value of 35 here, a minimum of 20 millimeters thick, and maybe a maximum of 50, and a default of 35. We'll pipe that into Y. Maybe we should check the width actually while we're at it. So we'll check out the original width was 1 meter 153 millimeters so we might just up our range to kind of account for that and we'll make our table 1 meter wide and again we have to make our length kind of fit the original table we want we don't have to this is where we're adding parameters to our table that we can drive. So it's up to you to decide what kind of size it's going to be. So we'll make our max something like 2 meters just so that people can go sort of crazy when they're playing with your parameters. And we'll make our min um, 1.2 meters and our default value 1 1300 millimeters. Oops, our value 1300 millimeters and our default value 1300 millimeters. We'll pipe that into the Z. And we can make each of these sticky. And if you remember from previous tutorials, sticky means that the parameter appears in the left window. Sticky. And we can just pipe this into a scale after the scale that we've made here. So if we make another scale, or if we use the existing scale that we have, and pipe this into our scale transformation. We should now have our table that we can drive using these sticky parameters. And the good thing about this logic is that it's very easy to copy and paste this logic to other aspects of the table. 
uh, the only thing that you're going to want to change is the range. So if we take our leg now and we pipe our leg into the geometry size and put that into our scale and put this scale into our unweld vertices, we now have a massive, massive leg. You can see the leg's the size of the table. So to get around that, we need to change these values. And we'll just rename them as well while we're at it. Oh. And we'll make our default of our leg something like, um, uh, well, we'll make our minimum of our leg something like 75 millimeters. We don't want it to snap. If someone wants to fabricate it, and our maximum is like maybe 250 millimeters, so they can still get have a real stocky leg if they are, they're after that. And we'll make our default 100 millimeters. Our leg thickness is actually something that we don't want to drive. It's because this is actually our leg height. Um, and our leg height should be the same as what it was originally. Now, it just occurred to me that this leg height is actually going to somewhat break the logic that we've created because I didn't account. Uh, I have accounted for whether the leg height. So tabletop will get positioned at the top of the legs so if we create change leg height it should should work so we need to make our leg height a range that makes sense for a tabletop maybe we can make it really high so that people can make kind of a dining table if they're that way inclined Beginning to get there, and our leg width should really be the same as our leg length, so we don't actually need the sticky. And now we have a table that has its leg variables drivable, its leg height variables drivable. We switch to presentation mode now. You can customize your table fairly completely. Now I'll actually end the tutorial here before I cover creating the gaps in between. Um, I think enough time has been spent. Uh, thanks for your time and hopefully you'll find this useful.